Buenos Nachos Amigos, and welcome to Halijuku. It's a podcast about East Asian pop culture uh, from a couple of non-East Asian dudes. Here, just talking about it because we like the stuff. Uh, music, new, m- media, movies, TV shows, things like that. But mostly K-pop. Uh, I'm Petey Rave. You're a man with no plan. Here with me is my tag team partner. My right hand man to my left hand side. We've got Brandon Cooper, a.k.a. King Kaz. I'm, I'm moving my mic in show rather than pre-show <laughs> where I should have done it. What is up, K-pop? Yes. What is up, K-pop? There's a lot. Good of morning, up. K-pop. Good morning. So, real quick, before we get into anything else, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to drag this out. Shout out to Amber, right? She's fucking, she's putting in work, dog. Yeah. She's out there. She's putting in work. I see you. I see you on the Instagram. You're putting in work. Yeah. Shout she's, out. She's, she's I may not like all work. of it, <laughs> but you're putting in work. <laughs> she's, you know, hey, this may not all be for everyone. But she's out there yeah. hustling, and you gotta appreciate. She is. That. She's fucking out there, fucking hustling, and I fuck. Yeah. I do appreciate that shit. Though. You know, like, like she's, I, not, she's not expecting anything from anyone. Not ex- not waiting on anybody. She's. You know what? She wants to put out music, and she put in the work to put out music. Fuck yeah! Like, like that, that was the thing I think we talked about with her before. Whereas we were we were just talking about that feeling of wanting to do, wanting to do, wanting to do, wanting to do, getting that chance. Oh, it doesn't hit exactly the way the people who who forefronted you wanted it to hit. But you you pushed enough to do that thing, and then you fucking sat on the bench waiting for them to give you another chance. And we were like, yo, just fucking do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like there are so many other people that you have talked about and that we have just kind of been paying attention to little by little in the Korean music scene who are taking that forefront of their self to just go and fucking do it. And, and I'm so fucking happy that she's, she's doing that now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could, you know, you, you could, you could get out there and when they give you minutes, you could play like, like nothing and not bother to, to try to play. And then when you're on the bench, whine about getting, not getting minutes, Hassan Whiteside, or you can get out there and this put it put in the is? work. Wait, what um, podcast sorry. is this? I need a header. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'll, uh, I should, I should, I should leave that for then. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Good up, big up to Amber. But uh, but speaking of new things, speaking of what's what's been catching our attention, what we've been noticing, uh, we always talk about. We always start off every episode talk about. What's new? What's caught our attention in the past? Yeah. Since, I guess at this point, month <laughs> since we've we've kind of like been been uh, together. Uh, but yeah, Kaz, what what's new? What what's caught your attention? Uh, all right, so so new for me. Uh, speaking of the kind of let's get it uh, is fucking Jay Park uh, is is dropping some new music, and obviously you know that means there's going to be a track with the the AOMG boys. Uh, or just the people from AOMG. So there's Jay Park, Simon Dominic, uh, Loco and Gray, called Upside Down. It's a dope little fun track. Yeah, it's a nice little, like, just straightforward, fun hip-hop track, uh, Upside Down. Uh, it's fun. It's, like, it's it's Yeah, cool. it's definitely it's it's super fucking fun. Uh, and it works really well. Uh, they, 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 they all contribute a, a, a little bit nicely. Yeah. And I, I just like because I, I have another song from Local, but it was one of those things. Local has such a range, dude. He has such a range, and like it, it, it's one of those things, right? Because he he is in a place where he is shining and he is doing a lot of great things. But like, I I, I don't know why I want to I want to forefront Loco into like the international scene, man. I I I feel like this dude just fucking has it. Yeah. Like he he fucking has it, and I, I want to see him do fucking so much more. Yeah, he has is really good. Uh, he has a really good skill, and he has a good range, and like he has a really good personality uh, that I think shines in in a lot of his music. Uh, and and he does well. And like uh, Gray is is nice in this. Uh, Simon yeah. D. It's nice to see Simon D. Again, it's always nice to see Simon D. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think Simon D. is at that point in his, his career where he's like. What you guys doing? 
No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> what you guys doing? I want to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, you just kind of, he, he gets to pick and choose at this point, you know? Yeah. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, yeah. But yeah. But speaking of Gray. Yeah, speaking of, uh, I got a track by the girl Hoylin, um featuring Gray called Dally. <laughs> yes. It's a stupid it's a stupid title, but I, I was I kinda came into this a little bit a little bit hesitant. A little bit hesitant. And then I ended up enjoying the fuck out of it. Yeah. Like I was gonna pick it either way and I was gonna talk it up a little bit even if I didn't like it, because it, it like Joyland's just been kind of doing great shit, but I actually really enjoyed this. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I, I like I like a lot of this track. Uh you know, I, I've always liked Sistar uh and yeah. Yorin, like like i've been i've been like keeping an eye on her post uh sister i guess at this point uh and she's been like she you know she set, set, set up this label for herself uh and she's been like and, and if you follow her instagram you know she's been in la it's basically she moved to la and been working on all this and like go you know getting dance lessons getting heel you know high heel dance lessons uh and you know getting her twerk on <laughs> trying to like really yeah. hone in on this like and on this style for herself uh and it's working for her uh she she does uh the the service of like having her choreographer and her like you know dancer on the on the in the music video with her uh i guess as a guide post for herself uh but yeah she's i I will say like if nothing else there's great athletic achievement in a lot of her choreography (laughs) in this like just i i i can't imagine the the amount of like core work she's had to do and the amount of like uh like athletic you know like calisthenics she's had to do Mm -hmm. to be able to pull all these like some of these dance moves Especially in high heels. Yeah, no, she's she's. Uh, I I I don't know how this actually kind of became the theme here, but like she's putting in work. It, it, yeah. It's the putting in work thing. Like, yeah, she went out there and got it. Like, like like you said, she put together this kind of label mostly for herself, but like, who knows what that that can grow into? You know what I mean? And in, in, into the future, um, like. Like yeah, for right now it's 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 about her, and and that's fine because she still has the time and the effort to really 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 do this stuff. Um, and now she doesn't have anyone to answer to, right? So now now it allows that sense of of actual creativity, right? Like yeah, there, there's still a thing about it where you want to sell albums, you want to do numbers, you want to do all that shit. But now you can kind of you you can kind of reach out. A little bit more right you can work with who you want to work with you can you can reach out to whatever producers you want to reach out to so it it, it allows you to do more in that yeah. sense yeah it, it, it allows her to pursue the trends she wants to pursue you know like she's going for a certain style she's going for a certain appeal uh but she which is you know it's it's a calculation in itself but it's a it's still there's still you know a little bit of riskiness you know, she's doing like a very sexy sound and a very sexy look, and very, you know, uh, even though she's yeah. going for a trend, uh, so she gets to like take the risks that she wants to take going after some something. Uh, but yeah, uh, all right. So last but not Loco. least for me, the boy Loco, um, the song called "Party Band," uh, featuring Punchinello and Thor. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Uh, it, I, I don't know. It's just it, it, it's loco, man. Like like, like loco right <laughs> now for me is that that uh it couldn't do no wrong level. Like <laughs> this the the sound he's putting out, the shit that he's doing. I just I fucking respect it so much. Yeah, this is, this is a cool track. Party band is a really cool track. It's also like it, this is one of those uh brains too jaded uh things. Uh, where it's a two-track video, so it's party band and then Opa, 
or O P P A. Uh, but yeah, Party Band is a cool, uh, a cool track, a cool like, uh, it, cool guy track. <laughs> uh, and, and it works really well. Uh, the video is interesting for being just one sh- one set, one like more or less one shot. Uh, or like one one scene, I guess not one shot, but one scene, uh, just in different you know different angles maybe, uh, and, and it works well. And it works as a nice little combo with the with Opa. Uh, yeah. After after he wakes up and has to get back to school stuff, wakes up in class. We've all been there. <laughs> but yeah, no, like like local sound is just like. Like I said, he has a range, right? Like, yeah, he has a lot of songs that sound like this. He has a lot of songs that are very thought provoking and stuff like that. But he can make a club track. He could drop a he could drop a fucking just a dope beat, you know, off off a fucking SoundCloud and then and then put words to it and just put that out. And it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> but his his stuff that i think he's really passionate about is that really like thought provoking kind of deep sound stuff uh but it, i don't know i just I, I i i feel like i'm waxing too poetically about about loco but th- this dude is is good at what he does yeah i have to say i feel for loco uh sitting around on the couch getting drunk and beating your friends at super nintendo it's what i dream about too sometimes <laughs> yeah it's, it's my kind of dream too yeah I'm right there with yeah. you, Loco. Uh, but yeah, moving forward, I have a few tracks to talk about. Uh, let's talk about it. so uh, yeah, I have a little couple of backlog tracks. Uh, a new twice. This is new, there, there's been a couple of new twices. One in well, this one was the Korean comeback. There was even more recently a Japanese comeback. There was not not really anything worth writing about. Uh, but this new track. Uh, it's, it's a feel good bubblegum pop track. Like there's not, I mean, you know what you're going to get with twice, uh, which is honestly their strength and it can be their, their weakness and their strength. You know what you're getting with twice. You're getting a fun, catchy, feel good bubblegum pop track. Uh, and and that's it. It's not going to pretend to be anything else. It's not going to pretend to be anything deeper. Uh, it, it's, it, it, you know, that, that's not what it, that's not what they exist for. Uh, that's not what JYP put them on this earth for. Uh, <laughs> he put them on this earth for the, the glory of their, his almighty leader. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking, I'm, I'm spoiling the, 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 the headlines segment. Um, he, he, they, this is just a fun pop track. Uh, you also got to appreciate the video. Uh, it, it, you know, just the all the the sheer amount of like movie and t- and, and like like the sheer amount of movie references, um, many of which I didn't mm-hmm. know that Koreans would know <laughs> in any way. Like, uh, but I guess you know, sappy romantic movies, you know that are perfect date movies of course koreans know <laughs> uh koreans have mastered the movie date i will say they, they, they do love the movie date uh look between between them and japan and having having fucking places that you can go sit on a couch and watch a dvd <laughs> like, what the fuck yeah they, they've mastered like, they, they've got the they've got the love seat movie theaters <laughs> right like they like it, 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 it's all about the push man it's all about like yo come have fun and chill and you know hey maybe 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 he'll like you maybe she'll like you who knows yeah, yeah. but we set you up you just gotta knock it down <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah it's a fun track well, well what did you think of uh, uh it, twice it, it's bubble cummy pop i like the video kind of more than i like the song like you mm-hmm. said uh there's a lot of just like fun references like i i for me the the reference to leon the professional which yeah. is a movie that kind of hits near and dear to me like i fucking love that movie i always forget how much i love that movie 
And and I think I need to remember more often how much I love that movie because whenever people ask me what my favorite movie is, I can't think. But that the besides the point, I think I kind of I, I I love these these kind of videos and 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 this theme of a thing has kind of been done to death. Like we we've seen this concept in Korean videos before, but it, it's done really well here. Um, and the song is nothing to write home about. It it yeah. but it's not bad. But it, it is definitely like bubblegummy pop. Like we're not going to be talking about it again next week. Yeah, no. Nah. Uh, but it's going to be fun, and the fact that it's on Spotify probably will be one of the main only reasons that <laughs> that it would get replay for me because it'll just be on a playlist. Also, got to appreciate yeah. uh, Momo's Tina Belcher cosplay uh, in there. One of those moments, uh, whether it was intentional or not uh yeah fun twice song always good to get a nice fun new twice song um speaking of, uh, i guess it's not not so much speaking of but you know it kind of transitions uh girl groups that i like speaking of uh huyin she of mamamoo uh she's over there <laughs> the third one I can put right there uh she came out with a solo track uh, the this year has been uh, is seemingly is the year for Mama Mood to really like crank out song after song apparently, uh, because not only that like Hwasa has a tra- uh, has a track with Loco out there, uh, you know Solar keeps doing her, uh, Solar's emotion, Solar's emotion, uh, stuff, but Ween came out with a track called Easy featuring CK, um. And it's it's cool. Like it's a kind of like cool, chill, uh, hip hop style track. Uh, it very much seems like it's like her get is like slipping into what she feels is comfortable for her and her vocal style and her like musical style. Um, and she's and she's fantastic. And I think she's fantastic as far as vocally in this track. She has a really great confidence in this track. And I think that's like the strength of all the Mama Moo members is that when they approach a track and they approach a performance, they approach it with like a confidence and like a yeah. almost like cockiness like that I think sets them apart. I think again over somebody else performing, maybe even performing the same exact track uh which i which i like i uh i don't know if you've noticed that or if you, what you thought about that uh i, I mean I'm not, i don't know if they're like any more confident than anyone else is but i think they definitely they they know their style right like they know their style they kind of know what to do so it it comes across effortlessly yeah. so you you could read that in one of two ways you could you could read it as like they're really confident in it or you could like hey they really put in the work they know what they're doing like yeah. by the time you see this product it's very well polished yeah uh, i think that works well for uh and yeah and the song is good i think uh, if i will admit if this wasn't Queen, if this wasn't a member of Mama Moo, I I would I would there, there would be I I don't think I would be very hyped about this, uh, because it's not a it's not necessarily you know the most captivating song ever, but it's a nice song. Yeah. I would I would chill to it and like jam to it a couple times and then like you know not really pay too much attention to it, but I think partially it is because i'm i'm like i'm all in on like i'm such a mama moo fanboy uh is part of it and part of it is because uh she performs it really well and i think that that helps the song overall i don't know what what did you think of the song um like i said it's, it's performed really well it's performed confidently enough i i i don't know if i full on agree with you that if it wasn't someone from mama moo would seem less because i i think there are some solo artists that could carry this song really well yeah but yeah but but 
if it wasn't somebody that I was a fan of, I don't know if I would yeah give it any more attention. I think that's more what I was saying. Yeah, like it's a good song, but you know. Um uh, but yeah, moving on, uh talking about uh a debut track that caught my attention. Uh G Idol or just Idol. I'm not sure. Like uh, some places call them just <laughs> Idol. This calls them G Idol or Yoja Yoja Idol. Aidur uh like children. Uh like their Korean name is just kids. Uh or you know girls uh, uh but I don't know. Uh Idol the newest de- debut group from uh from uh, uh Cube Entertainment uh came out with their debut track La Tata. Um and it's good. It's actually surprisingly interesting. Uh it, a lot of it actually works surprisingly well. It's it's the group is built around uh Jun Soyeon, she of a couple of things including like I think uh including I'm pretty rap star. Uh you know, she's been a solo rapper for a little while. Uh you know, done done collaboration tracks I think here and there. Uh and then but I guess th- they decided she her strength at least at this point because she, she's young, she's super young so she's still like you know, uh, early in her career, just in general. So they decided to go ahead and put put a group around her, uh, and the the members, you know, are, uh, fill out really well and hold their own. I think um, there's a lot to to like. It is definitely you know it's it's trend following. Yeah, it's very trend following. It kind of uh, incorporates some of the stuff they did with a uh, you know card and some of like the tropical sounds with a little bit of hip hop, uh, and it's is definitely yeah. going for like a you know it, I don't know what to say edgier but like you know more confident hip hop sounding girl group a la Blackpink, uh, and I think it works well. I think uh, it makes me. Uh, interested to see where they go from here uh kind of yeah i i'm i'm liking the trend where we are of i i said that now i'm i'm second guessing myself but like i like this sound that we're starting to put out a little bit more in k-pop with girl group i i've i've always favored the more kind of hip hop inspired R and B inspired girl groups in in K pop, you know, which is why I liked Twenty One, which is why I liked Red Velvet, you know, like uh but Red Velvet has it goes back and forth between yeah. like bubble pop and, and that kind of R and B hip hop sound. Um and then of course Blackpink, right? Like um I I I've, I've always tended towards those groups a little bit more when it comes to like the female yeah. groups. And so right now this well this isn't this is definitely like a song that's been sitting around, right? You you, you can feel it. This is a song that's been well, it's like a, on someone's a, backlist. Yeah. I think uh what's crazy is that it's actually so, at, at least a court on on paper was written and composed by by Jun Soyeon herself uh which is uh-huh. kind of kind of shows a lot of like where they the confidence they feel on her even in like building a group around her uh she the, the fact that they put out the title track as the one she composed uh, so it's probably something like, yeah, she had around and she's been working on her, in her notebook. She's been working on the beat for a while. Like, yeah, it, it's, it, I, I can imagine that. Yeah. Like it's something like she had on her, on her computer. She kept showing the label and she's like, well, this isn't going to be a great song for you, but I mean, we've been thinking about putting your a group around you. Maybe we can put it, you know, if we do that, we'll do it for them. It's like, yeah, yeah. So it's like, and then like yeah. probably get a lot of advice from other people, and then they probably some uncredited sculpting of the track 
by somebody, you know, somebody, you know, maybe a little bit of a you know, ghost writing, maybe, you know, uh, but, but yeah, it's something that's probably, yeah, it's been, it, it's the track that's been waiting to be released for the right moment for the artist that, you know, has been waiting for the right group to fully, you know, go after the, the music industry in this, with this approach in this, this fashion. Yeah. So, it's interesting. so, so yeah, no, like I'm, 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 I think, like you said, with all that, I'm kind of in the same camp that you are. I'm excited to see what happens because there, there is no way, and and not even Blackpink as what they were supposed to be has escaped it. To anyone ever escaped it, no one escapes it. You have to do a bubblegum bubblegum pop song at yeah. some point, and it depends on how they go about that. Um, just like, just like as a boy group, no matter what, you have to do a fucking ballad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you got to do a ballad. Like you got to do a coffee shop song. Yeah, um, yeah. You, 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 you gotta. It's like you got to do one of those like fan servicey ballads for your fandom. You know, because that's what the girl, the boy group fandoms are gonna expect. Yeah, and you got to do the bubblegum yeah. pop track. And it's like it's yeah. You gotta uh, you gotta have the track that somewhere during the performance there's there's f- however many members in your group stools on the stage and everybody comes out and is just sitting in the stool <laughs> you know you gotta have that shit so you gotta, you know, the, your main your lead vocalist it's his like big solo like yeah this is big like high note um yeah we gotta be hopeful because like i i you know i think that's one of the things that we both are into is that we both are more into the hip hop influence, more confident uh, girl groups. Like, like that's why we both love 20. Like you said, that's why we both love 21. So we both uh, love those parts of red velvet. That's why we both love FX. Uh, Cause it's, you know, there's more interesting stuff going on there. So we both uh, liked four minute, you know, so that's why I got I keep getting into random other girl groups that are hip hop influenced and keep getting my heart broken. That's what we both loved about. I was thinking about girl groups like GI. Oh my god, GI global <laughs> icon. <laughs> what could have been? We had an episode titled "GI is Tremendous" because yeah. we love that like a EP, uh, and then you know. And it's like, uh, and it's like, like, uh, it, it just is the thing. It's like, just if you want another example of like the, what our hopes get of my hopes getting kind of crushed, which is what it would be uh, HUB, aka Hope You Bounce. If you look at their <laughs> debut track, uh, and I, I, people should go check it out. It's a fun track, uh, but uh, it. But you look at their latest track and it, it didn't work out. Uh, also, I almost forgot. I, okay, I, I, I could have uh, instead of rambling, I could have used that as a as a go, as a as a segue into speaking of groups that that we were hopeful about because like hip hop influence because of like dance and like all this stuff. Uh, the Arc, you know, we're we'll going back to the Arc. Uh, two members of the Arc, you know, Yuna Kim and Jun Minju are properly re-debuting, I guess, in a sense. Uh, even though they did debut a while back, and I think it's a song that we've talked about on this uh, on the show way back in the day when they had their, like, pre-The Ark day, you know, uh, uh, like, hype uh, with their song Goodbye Rain. Uh, are, re- are coming back as Khan. Khan! Um... And and like the the, the the arc, the whole thing. I mean, it's been documented. We talk about the you can go all the episodes. We talk about the group. Uh, and we t- can go back and try to find the episode. We talk about this track. Um, it was a you know it was a group that was tremendously talented. Uh, really good dancers, really good singers. Uh, and had a potential to to do a lot of things like they could probably do anything if you put them 
you know, the, the, you know <laughs> put any style in front of them, they probably could have done it uh but it just didn't work out because sometimes just companies just fall apart and then and they, they just disappeared uh but they've been staying friends and we've been seeing like little like glimmers of hope of them like hanging out with each other and, and doing things together and like that the possibility of two members being on the the final group of the unit uh and minju being on like k-pop star and things like that uh but yuna came and jun minju are back together and they're they're, they're going to properly re-debut we're, we're waiting on the track and the main like pre-hype stuff has been their covers on their youtube channel and it's been pretty fantastic yeah. Uh, it's been pretty kind of fantastic to listen to the different covers. Like they've done Despacito, uh, they've been doing like some of these other tracks, uh, Rockabye, some of these like you know very very obvious popular tracks. They did uh, Finesse. Uh, the first couple of tracks they kind of like uh, didn't record it the best way, but they've been improving that. <laughs> uh, also, I wish they would. Um, put the name of the artist on the title of the title of the videos uh for nothing else but like seo <laughs> reasons uh but other than that it's just been cool seeing them kind of like seeing them show their personalities and their talent like uh and be able to highlight that uh again and then i'm looking forward to checking that out have you, have you been able to check out some of these like cover covers and stuff um i i peeked into the channel earlier and I, I i got immediately greeted with the despacito cover <laughs> uh, and i was like oh okay uh, but it, you know it, it, it's it's an obvious do you know what i mean like it, it it's definitely something you do when you're when you're trying to just just put a sound out right yeah. because it's a it's a really popular sound uh people really gravitated toward it towards that song for some fucking reason like it's not bad but like it it, it got out of hand <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah like 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 you said i i think the things that they need to do are the little things more than anything else they yeah. know how to perform they know how to sing they know how to rap they know how to do those things i think it's those other little things like you said like the better seo um like a better hashtagging uh, of things, right? Because you you go through this YouTube channel and you like you said you click on these covers. There's no there's no link back to the original song. There's no like mention of the artist so that like somebody can see it and be like, oh look look at these people doing this thing. You know what I mean? Like so you, you it, 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 those little things are things you kind of got to work on. Yeah. So well, hopefully things work out. Cause I'm looking forward to the debut and we'll, we'll probably talk about it on the show uh but yeah yeah uh that is it for the things that are new what's new for for this episode now we're going to transition over to our headlines join us on the flip side welcome Ladies and gentlemen, to our headlines, uh, we've got three major stories about all three of the major groups, a uh, major uh, agencies. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy, uh, but it's kind of fun. Uh, it's kind of like a three punch thing. Uh, but yeah, let's get down to it. Yeah. YG, he, he, he f- Winning group from wide okay. Winning okay. Let's just get down to it. Winning group from Mix Nine will not debut due to contract dis- disagreements with YG. Uh, after much speculation uh, about the debut status of the winning group from YG's reality show Mix Nine, it turns out that they will amazingly not be debuting because the labels cannot agree to a contract with YG. Uh, on May second, it was reported. Yeah, that so- YG, yeah. like uh, it was like reported, and then Hypey Face Entertainment like. Uh, confirmed it and everything so like it, it was like it, it the, the whole thing if you remember it was like he was trying to initially it was going to be like a few like a year or so and then he suggested a three-year contract after the end of the show with like them having a yg having the group half of the year and 
the original companies having it the other half of the year. Uh, but, you know, I guess it just couldn't work out. Yeah, like, so uh, we, we kind of, we didn't predict this, right? There was enough clues in the last few articles that came out and, and um, even, even kind of in, in the muddledness of everything else that was going on, you, you could kind of really already see what the end result was going to be. And then that's just what we have here. So you have obviously the group's not going to debut. YG makes a very long but half-hearted apology. Uh, a very fucking long. You could go to Asian Junkie and and read that. If, Don't if, if you. It's uh, literally uh, just like it's really just bullshit. Like it it, it literally that. boils down to like, oh man, damn, my bad. We fucked up. I really yeah. wanted this to happen so that one day I can make more money. Yeah, and then he looks off into the stars. Um, but <laughs> there, there was just no way around this. You, uh, what they wanted and what he was trying to get, what y, what YG as a company, not even just YG himself, right? I don't, I don't know what this is. Uh, not even just YG himself, but uh, that company, what they were really looking to do was kind of bully everyone else around them, right? Um, yeah. And kind of be like, hey, we're YG. You should let us do what the fuck we want. Um, yeah. And, and like we said, when, when you when you get into that, you have to get into dollars and cents, right? Yeah. They were looking to put in the most minimal amount of dollars and cents while everybody else put in more and then get the most out of it. I don't know what the fuck my hands are doing today. Uh, like, so... They were really, really, really looking for for minimal uh, minimal investment with maximum like yeah. pull, and you can do that sometimes. There, there are sometimes you can do that, and it's not. I, I don't, I don't fault them for trying it to a certain extent. I just fault them for thinking that anybody was gonna let them get away with it without yeah. some kind of flavor text to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like. At, at least spin it. At least make other people think that they're going to make their money back. And then in yeah. the end, be like, oh, shit, I don't know what the fuck happened. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> then, then there's a mystery. You know what I mean? Like, yes. then we can sit here and speculate. We could be like, did YG know that they weren't going to, no one else was going to make money on this but them? And me and Petey would have been like, yeah. But <laughs> at least there could have been speculation. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, we could have so played fun. with it a little bit. Like you just okay. straight went out there and was like, "Yo, I'm gonna put in five. Y'all all putting in a hundred though, right?" Like what? No. <laughs> like, like no. no. The fuck you mean? Um, um and, yeah, and like, so that's just that's just what this yeah, leads to. What it is. Yeah, I mean, basically, what it comes down to, and you can like read the why do you but basically, if you want to like street like strip it of the bullshit, what he wanted was to. He was dreaming that Mix Nine was gonna be his produce one oh one, his you know, uh sixteen or his, his like thing that was going to yeah. the show's popularity was gonna hype the group afterwards on its own, but then it flopped and nobody gave a shit. And then he realized, Oh, I'm gonna have to actually promote this group. How do you promote a group group? How how do you promote a K pop group? Does, it, does anybody in this building know how to promote a K-pop group? No? Someone. <laughs> someone. Come here. Come here, someone. You know how to promote a K-pop group? Damn it. Ginny. Do, 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 you, do you know how to promote a K-pop group? Like, no, no I, I work at YG. I was like, what? Yeah. You know, I was like, he's the, he, it, it's, it's every, you know, it, uh, his entire the, their entire career it's always been like release a song let the hype do the work for you instead of actually doing putting in the groundwork uh and he uh, and, or, i mean I, I shouldn't say that but that's at least what he wanted to do with this group because he's already having enough trouble promoting the group that he has right now the groups that he has right now and he was going to add another one 
to promote them. No, he was going to hope the show does its own hype and just rake in the money without actually having commitment to any of the people involved, you know. It's why Jesus scumbag and I'm glad he failed. <laughs> I'm 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 joyful that he failed. And I will I will stand I I don't I'm not going to put those words in Kaz's mouth. I will stand alone on that if I have to, but I'm glad he failed. Uh but yeah, YG. Man, remember when we used to be YG fanboys? <laughs> remember when the show was a YG biased b- b- podcast? <laughs> yeah, no, was, that, the, that's the, when they left more myth to everything, though. You know what I mean? Like there was more, there was more business sense. There was more mythos around things, and and now they just they they've grown to this point where they're just like ah fuck you know hey we're the big guys on campus fuck you and and other people are not gonna take that shit yeah people are gonna be like uh no dog (laughs) like i i put in an amount of this investment as well i want my fucking money (laughs) like um if you're if everybody's wondering why why you wouldn't announce it right at at any point let alone uh, like uh, what if you found it uh opportune to announce it of that he wasn't debuting this group. Uh, let's just say there's a bigger, slightly bigger scandal going on that he probably found an opportune time to hide this news under, which is apparently JYP is part of a cult. Um, <laughs> or at least according to Dispatch, he, he is. Uh, Dispatch like has reports, and they've been doubling down on the fact that JYP is part of Salvation Sect, uh, which, if you're unfamiliar is uh one of them crazy cults that are you know you see a few of them in um in the in in korea and and other i imagine other asian countries but mainly probably i would i would guess anywhere where there's been a lot of missionaries (laughs) probably because they're they're usually like christian cults but but you know there's there's things here and there but they've been connected with the odeyang mass suicide and uh business wise uh with the cell wall fairy tragedy uh you know due to like business ties and things like that and uh and yeah. there's been a lot of corruption uh allegations here and there uh and this batch uh they you know they've been kind of like putting the report together putting the things together about jybp being a huge part of this group and there's been a lot of back and forth, uh, you know, with some denials by JYP, uh, denials by the Salvation Sect themselves. I guess probably just not wanting their, their, you know, in into the K-pop industry being, uh, you know, being put down. I don't know. I, I I'm not sure what the purpose of their denial is, but we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, but. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of back and forth, but there's been a lot of solid evidence, video evidence, uh, a lot of like insider reports, you know, uh, corroborated by multiple sources. Um, that JYP, despite the fact that he's long uh, claimed to be non-religious, is part of one of them crazy cults. It's like when we found out uh, Tom Tom Cruise was a Scientologist, or when. <laughs> Fucking uh, John Travolta was a Scientologist, is a Scientologist, yeah. or when the other guy. It also it are, so so. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Right. Let's give JYP benefit of the doubt. Right. Maybe maybe like a timeshare. They were offering something, and JYP was like, "Yo, I could use them coupons, dog." I only got to sit through an hour of them trying to convert me. I'm fucking down. Like. And he went for the timeshare thing, and then he found out, oh, you got to come to the second fucking thing, uh, you know, to to fucking to really get the coupons or or you know the flat screen TV. And he's like, God damn, I got to come back again. Fuck, I already invested an hour. I might as well come back a second time because I want that goddamn TV. I'd do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> and then they you know then I mean? they you know, and then you go there, and it's like they serve. They serve a, like a, a really good buffet. And be like, damn. I mean, I'm not sure about this cult thing, but yo, this buffet is fire though. Yeah, it's all free. 
So like, oh, this is free? Yo. Better than the fucking right buffet now. at the Paris. I'm glad I didn't go there. <laughs> I skipped on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, when, when you go to Vegas, you gamble on a lot of things. And sometimes it's on if you pick the right buffet. Yeah. And and y'all that went to the Paris found out that you, you, you picked the wrong buffet. You, 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 you hit on 18 and then you, you washed out. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I don't know. JYP. JYP. Uh, who knows? We'll have to see. Well, it's, it, it, it's and and you're wondering why this matters, uh, and it matters because JYP is uh, a a lead person and the head, uh, whether he's C- CEO or not, he is the figurehead and probably one of the biggest decision makers in what is now solidly again one of the big three companies in the K-pop. Um, a lot of people in his employment. A lot of young people looking to them as a company for training uh, and for uh, a, a, a you know a path into the industry. So a lot of young susceptible minds. So it matters. It's a it's an issue if if he is involved with things that are dangerous, you know. And you know, like a like uh, a organization like the Salvation Sect, which is has been associated with some bad bad things, uh, like many of those like like uh, cults basically uh, over there. So well, let's see, one of those wait and see issues. Uh, it's not only. Sp- Again, another. It's another. Is this sports odds and ends? Uh, we're we're having a wait and see issue. <laughs> this is a sports odds and ends signature. It's the wait and see. Uh, but yeah, moving on to we get we hit YG. Now we hit J. Do we hit JYP? What's left? SM. Uh, SM Entertainment has been paying millions to Isuman's company for years. Uh, SM says <laughs> everything's legal. Uh, in a re- recent report by Asia, Econo- Asia Economy Daily, it was revealed that SM Entertainment has been paying a company owned by Isuman millions for years. Uh, the quote says, according to SM's business report for 2017, SM paid a company named Like Planning uh, 10832700000 won, uh, so approximately about $10 million in the course of the year. Over a year, like planning was c- created by Isuman in 1997. Uh, SM's business report states that like planning is in charge of producing an audio for SM's artist's album. Last year, the S- amount that SM paid like planning amounted to approximately five percent of their total sales, which was about 216 billion won, about 203 million dollars. Uh, in 2016, SM paid like planning about 11 billion won. A similar amount. This amount was also around five percent of that year's total sales. So, so it's like, it seems like they get a five percent right. basically. S was SM in the tax evasion controversy with all with everyone else? Probably. Before? I mean, it seems okay, like so what now, it is, uh, it's a it's a way of paying Isuman directly without paying, like because he's you know. Based on like it, it was a way to like funnel money to Isuman, yeah. But yeah, I I, I, f- I feel like this is not then a good look for them in the in the conspiracy dot connect the game, <laughs> right? You go like you go, hey, let's start the conspiracy here at tax evasion, right? Then like. Man, I wonder what they funnel their money through. Oh, now we have their this story where they're funneling their money through fucking uh, this company, and then now that everyone knows, they're like, "Bro, I'm just giving my homie a couple of dollars." You know what I mean? Like it, that was just a PayPal to a friend. That wasn't PayPal business to business. That was PayPal friend to friend. It's all cool. <laughs> 
Yeah, SM responded. I don't gotta put that on my taxes. <laughs> SM responded uh, to the report by stating that everything they've done is legal. Uh, quote, this is SM Entertainment. Our company would like to reveal our official stance re- regarding the report released by a news outlet about the Prada producing contract between our company and Like Planning. Uh, the producing contract between our company and Like Planning has been and continues to be considered one of the most important aspects of our company. Global contents competitiveness and growth before and after getting listed on <coughs> Cosdac uh, in 2000. We have transparently announced a contract and a transaction related to it regarding our contract with like planning with early examined precedents made with similar global businesses regarding obtaining consultation by a professional third party organization and signed a contract that was reasonable in comparison. Uh, there is no legal issue in regards to the contract and no unlawful internal dealings. As a leading company in Hallyu and K pop, uh, we have continuously grown. Uh, we can continue look to be, behind this curtain. We will continue don't to be a leading look business. Behind this curtain. Uh, we plan to maximize profit. Uh, yeah, the emphasis on legality it makes it like wonder. It's legal. Other. Yo, trust me. This I, is legal. Ask the lawyer. Like it's tech. Technically, no, you don't need to see these papers. It's legal. <laughs> you know, you know when you're you're doing like emotionally shady shit when you have to extra emphasize how legal it is. Like, yo, I understand you you found some legal loopholes. But it's still it's it still smells a little. It's still it's still still, it's still a little stank. It's still a little stank. Yeah. Uh but yeah. It, it's it, yeah, yeah. Uh it is comical. Uh like how obvious everything is. Uh there's some great comment though. There are some great comments. About there's always money in the banana plan, uh, in, in the uh, in the in the article uh, on Nation Jackie, um, yeah, SM. Everybody, everybody's into some stupidity. The entire K-pop industry is run by idiots, just like every other music well, industry. The JYP thing is not necessarily on him. You know what I mean? It's just like that's true. We, we 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 need more evidence on that one. See, that one's a mystery. Like, yes, you can be like, "Ooh, you know what's going on here," but but the other shit, yeah, no, you, y'all y'all dumb. Stop. Yeah. Stop. Uh, stop. Yeah. Stop. Um. Yeah. That brings us to the end of another fantastic episode of Halu Juku. Uh, that you don't have to wait and see for. Uh, Kaz. What hey, what's going bro. on? What's going on in your world? If you people would go check out uh, a wonderful little sports podcast called Sports Odds and Ends, hosted by myself and my good friend JVZ, and produced by the one, the great DJM. Um, it is a show that I have so much fun getting to do, um, and and the guys over there putting so much work work to it and we just get to have fun talk about sports and it's just a good old fucking time man it's a yeah good time. it's a great listen uh it, it's it's a fun podcast uh except for that last episode in which i was i felt personally attacked <laughs> <laughs> so, so all like it was it was like i i loaded up that thing right again ready for my flight for vegas it's like oh First article, Miami Marlins. Second article, like, uh, Miami Heat. Like, <laughs> uh, but it's all fun. Also, Hassan White has a bitch. Just, you know, if you, if you if you want to play, play. When you play, when they put you out on the court, if you play like a whiny little lazy pants. Then you why why are you gonna complain about not getting minutes? When they give you the minutes, you don't put the effort. They're not gonna give you the minutes. I don't know. Ball don't lie. Exactly. Uh but yeah, sports odds and ends. You can find it over at sports odds and ends dot com. You can find him at Kaz at King Kaz. You can find me at PD Rave. Uh you can find the show at Halujuku. Hallyjuku.com, kpoppodcast.com, rebelli.net for this and other shows. 
Rebelli TV on T on YouTube and other places. Um, yeah, check things out. Subscribe, like, share, do all the things. Well, didn't they tell you? Don't you know? Until next time. Hasta los huevos. Annyeong. Fighting. <laughs>